excessive to me. It's not excessive to anyone. What he just said is entirely reasonable and frankly logical. And yet both of these cases to different degrees, because one crime is clearly more egregious as the other, as alleged. These are cases that exemplify the soft on crime approach that too many judges take. We have a state filled with judges who are not very judgmental. They refuse to judge. They're not judgy. They look at these individuals and they show what I believe to be a callous disregard for the purported victims, for the police that work really hard to mitigate these threats, and for the community. Because when you have people who we believe to be dangerous based on allegations against them that seem very credible, you're putting everybody else at risk when you say, yeah, we're going to let these people go, whether it's due to no bail or very low bail. And I write about this issue extensively in my forthcoming book, What's Killing America, published by Center Street. I cover this extensively because it's not just Washington State that's being impacted by this. But here in Washington, we often have judges who try to justify their bail decisions or lack thereof by pointing to Washington court rules and state law. And they'll tell you that the court rules requires a, quote, presumption that the defendant be released without posting bail. That's usually the argument that's given. That's part of the court ruling or the court rules. And that's true. It is. But there's also three exemptions that could apply to any case that would then get a judge to say, okay, I am allowed in this case to offer bail of varying degrees based on the history of the individual, based on the allegations against him or her. Because that same rule also says that you can impose bail if, number one, and I'm reading directly from the law or from the rule. Number one, the court determines that such recognizance will not reasonably assure the accused appearance when required. Or two, there is shown a likely danger that the accused, A, will commit a violent crime, or B, seek to intimidate witnesses or otherwise unlawfully interfere with the administration of justice. Now, that first one, let's push aside and let's focus on those part two, A, B, and C. Those three pieces, because I think that they certainly apply here in both of the cases. There was shown a likely danger that the accused, one, will commit a violent crime, two, will seek to intimidate witnesses, or three, otherwise unlawfully interfere with the administration of justice. Can you not, based on just the details that were outlined by the prosecutor, say that those concerns are reasonable to hold as a judge? I would say yes. It is nearly impossible to make sense of either of these decisions in the context in which they're presented by the prosecutor. And by the police, it's hard to make sense of these decisions because judges don't comment on pending cases. Unfortunately, they rarely comment on cases ever at any point, making it very difficult to either hold them accountable because their silence helps kill, I think, important stories or makes it Impossible to understand if maybe they had some reasonable justification that we just don't see.